Atlantis crew on the ISS. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? And Houston, we are ready for the event. Fox News Radio, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call the Atlantis crew on the ISS for a voice check. Atlantis ISS, this is Eben Brown from Fox News Radio. How do you hear me? Good morning, Evan. We have you loud and clear from the International Space Station. Oh, good morning, uh, Dr. Magnus, Commander Ferguson. Thank you for speaking with me this morning. Firstly, uh, how's the mission going? Well, this is one of the first days we've been able to uh, take a deep breath and, uh, and appreciate what we're doing up here. Uh, we've been really busy for the first five, six days or so, but uh, I'd like to think it's going really well. Uh, you know, if, uh, the vehicle's really healthy. Atlantis is doing just wonderfully. Uh, it's great to see our space station friends up here, and uh, we've got our uh, big cargo module about, uh, about three quarters or so uh, all transferred. So it's going great. Commander Ferguson, uh, you mentioned uh, Atlantis is doing well, but how did she uh, hold up with uh, launch and ascent and, and her journey to the space station and uh, the uh, thermal protection system? And you know, how, how's, her, how's her health? Well, uh, you know, like I said, uh, I did. she's doing really well. Um, the, uh, the thermal protection system you mentioned that we worried about for a few years, it's one of the cleanest vehicles they've ever seen. So uh, we're not worried about that at all. And uh, Atlantis is purring like a kitten. I think she's about 25 years or so old, but uh, she performs just like a newborn. She's doing great. And Dr. Magnus, it's your first time back to the space station since your stay uh, late 2008, early 2009. How's the station looking now? What's different about it? Well, for one thing, it's a lot bigger since I've been uh, gone. They've added uh, three modules and, and a cupola, and the cupola is just spectacular. It's almost like being on a spacewalk without being in the suit. You've got a great view of the Earth, but it really feels like home, I have to admit. Uh, both of you uh, could tell me some about uh, the mission special tasks and some of the things that you're doing specifically. We know you made a, a rather large delivery to the ISS. Uh, how's that going, and, and, and what's going to be left at the station uh, when you guys depart? Well, uh, we are making a rather large delivery, and a lot of our time is being spent moving things onto the station and bringing things back uh, into our cargo carrier. We're leaving behind about a year's supply of food and consumables, as well as about 1,000 pounds of science equipment and some spare parts. We're taking back with us some trash and some uh, part pieces of hardware that need to be refurbished on the ground and uh, some other consumables that need to go home. So it's, it's keeping us pretty busy, but the station will be in uh, good supply once we leave. It, it seems that uh, the shuttle um, has been so helpful in, in able, you know, being able to bring up all these things and bring back down the, uh, uh, the refuse, if you will. How is the station going to get by without shuttle, being that uh, this is the last time shuttle can do this? Yeah, that's actually a real good question. Uh, you know, of course, uh, shuttle has been our heavy lifter for, uh, well, for the, the duration of our space station operations, which has been about 12 years or so, if you count the, no the amount of years that people have actually been living here. Um, we've slowly been phasing in uh, some, uh, some smaller rockets from our commercial partners, both in the United States, uh, of course, uh, the Japanese HTV and the European ATV. Um, and uh, not the least of which is the, uh, the Russian Progress vehicle. They're smaller cargo vehicles, but there's more of them. So we're still able to get uh, that turnover in material, uh, both on the way up, and then we can pack them full of uh, trash and, and we release them. Uh, the one big difference, of course, between the shuttle and those other vehicles is the shuttle is able to bring, uh, bring items home intact. With the other three vehicles I, I mentioned, uh, we just release them and they, they burn up and end up in the ocean. So from a return standpoint, bringing things back from the space station and getting to the Earth, we're going to miss the space shuttle. Well, you know, the, the two of you have had uh, a great vantage point because you've been obviously involved in 
in flying the shuttle and, and building the space station. What is that like when you, you sit down and you think about it and you go, wow, I get to do this kind of stuff? And what do you tell your family? What do you tell your friends about it? I mean, this is uh, an amazing adventure that not many people get to do, and, and, and you two are, are pretty lucky. We are indeed very fortunate to have had the experiences that we've had. And I remember a moment when I was up here on Expedition 18, I was just going about my normal routine. And in the course of one day, I talked to Moscow, I talked to Germany, I talked to Japan, and I talked to our two control centers in Houston and the one in Huntsville. And then I stopped for a second, and I did have one of those moments of realization. It's like, wow, look what we did. We built this huge, huge monster laboratory orbiting the Earth using country, you know, with cooperation from countries all over the world, and, and here I am living on it. It was just one of those moments that you have that, it, like you're speaking about, it just, it's, it just strikes you that, wow, this is really uh, just incredible. Commander Ferguson, same question. Well, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, um, when we rendezvous with the International Space Station, we can actually see it well, about six hours before we actually dock. And you see it as a, as a speck on the horizon, but you know that you're, you're closing rapidly. And as the, the afternoon of rendezvous uh, progresses, the station gets progressively larger and larger. And then we end up in what we call the RPM, or the rotation pitch maneuver, and that's where we're poised about 600 feet uh, below station. And I'll tell you, that is really, it, it, it's just an incredibly emotional moment for those who are fortunate enough to have been in that position and look up and see this tremendous space station that we've built in space. It really, it's, uh, it, it makes me both humbled and awestruck at what human beings, when they put their collective efforts together um, across a multinational effort, can, can build in space. This, this, uh, this orbiting laboratory is absolutely tremendous. And just to see it from below, it really leaves you with, a, like I said, a feeling of awe. Commander Ferguson, Dr. Magnus, I believe our window is closing. Uh, thank you so much for spending a, a few moments uh, with us, and uh, uh, have fun up there. Uh, soak it all in, and we'll see you back on the ground in Florida. Very good. We'll see you then, and, and hello to everyone in the area that's listening. We wish you could be here to share this experience with us. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Fox News Radio portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KTVI-TV. Cruz, uh, this is KTVI. We're coming to you in about 10 seconds here. Last space shuttle flight will now get some time off. Yeah, the crew of four, including Belleville native Sandy Magnus, will squeeze in a little more cargo. Stand by, stand by. International Space Station this morning before they can kick back and relax a little bit. Atlantis ISS, this is KTVI-TV. Do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Good morning. Good morning to Good both morning. of you. Talking, of course, with Sandy Magnus there and Commander Chris Ferguson. And Sandy, we have to start with you. I mean, what has this final mission been like for you? Well, I guess in one word, it's been very busy. We've been really working hard to get everything done since we are a crew of four. But on the other hand, I'm just thrilled to be back here on the International Space Station, and it feels like home. You're having a good hair day, Sandy. I did this just for you guys in the St. Louis area because everybody enjoyed it so much during <laughs> Expedition 18. <laughs> and we're going to float the mic over to Chris. Chris, any issues in space so far? I mean, what are the plans for the rest of the week before you guys return? Well, first thing, let me tell you that Atlantis is absolutely wonderful. It's uh, we haven't. It's been a flawless mission so far, and. Uh, you know, it's a 25-year-old it's a spacecraft, but it still performs like it's right out of the barn. Uh, we've, having a, we've had a wonderful mission so far. We've, uh, of course, brought up about 10,000 pounds of food and supply, enough hopefully to sustain the station um, for about a year to come. Uh, we have another couple days docked, and then, uh, then it's the, uh, the long road back to, uh, back to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It's always fun talking to you guys up in space, and, and especially you, Sandy, because you're one of us. You're from Belleville. I'm curious, do you, you've spent so much time up there. Do you feel at home? 
I do feel at home. It's really amazing how quickly I became readapted to the station after we docked, just translating and understanding where things are at. And I've actually run across a few bags with my handwriting on it that are still remain from Expedition 18. It's really quite funny. <laughs> about this virtual meal today. I know, Sandy, you had uh, some planning in all of this. This is going to be great for people to participate in. Oh, definitely. We try and, you know, NASA tries very hard to find ways for people to participate in this space experience. And, of course, when we come back to our hometown areas like I have in St. Louis, we try and share their experience as mm -hmm. much as possible because it is such a unique experience up here. All right, before we go, i got to see, I've always wanted to ask you guys to do this. If you just hold, the, set the microphone down. Sandy, Chris, could you guys turn a flip for us in zero gravity? <laughs> All right. Look at Chris. <laughs> I love it. There you go. I like the socks. Very That's nice. That's awesome. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you're cracking us up. Now, see, that's the oh, kind of space experience I want. That's right what we're going to miss right there, <laughs> along with all the other great work these so shuttle missions have done over the past 30 years. Thank you both for being with us this morning. We Sandy, totally you're the best. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Bye. <laughs> we'll see you back here in St. Louis. <laughs> okay. Every kid. It's great talking with you guys. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the KTVI portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KSDK TV. Pop a shower south and southwest of St. Louis this afternoon. The odds favor just a mix of sun and clouds, comfortably warm temperatures this afternoon, and a nice little breeze out of the east at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, mid to upper 80s for highs. So I don't think we can top that compared to where we've been lately weather-wise. This is nice. Yes, it absolutely is. Another good news is that the accident I mentioned earlier on westbound 270 has already been cleared, so that good. was minor, so that's out of the way. You won't have any issues with that. Let's take a look at some travel times around the St. Louis and metro area. You can see 70 westbound, 40, 64 eastbound, and 55, 70 inbound. All good to go at this point. Shaded green. You're hovering around the 60 mile an hour mark. Let's take a look outside at the Boone Bridge. You can see here just east of the Missouri River that traffic is fairly light at this point in time, so you shouldn't have too many concerns or issues. And then switching a bit further north here, 70 just east of the Missouri River and the Blanchette Bridge. You can see traffic there is moving pretty smooth as well. Art. We have a new picture to share with you this morning. This is a huge fireball rising from a burning manufacturing plant in upstate New York. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. The client will be coming to you live in less than one minute. After 11 hours, the cause is under investigation. Security is tied in Mumbai, India this morning following deadly attacks on... Atlantis ISS, this is KSDK TV. How do you hear me? Shower killing 17 people and wounding oh, we have 131 others. Police are busy we have you loud and clear. Behind the assault. We have you loud and clear. Police We're about a minute away. The city on high alert. We have new information from the Transportation Security Administration on security breaches at airports around the country. The TSA says it has recorded more than 25,000 security breaches since the September 11th attacks. The breaches include everything from people who evade security to those who accidentally left a bag at the security checkpoint. A TSA spokesperson says the number of breaches represents only a fraction of the 5.5 billion passengers in the past 10 years. If you believed, there's nothing up my sleeve. This morning, the crew of Space Shuttle cool. Atlantis received a celebrity wake-up call. R.E.M. lead singer... Ten seconds. ...much before Man on the Moon played. We Today, the crew will get to enjoy some much-needed time off. ...and thank all the women and men at NASA who have worked on... Belleville native Sandra Magnus is one of those Atlantis crew members up in the ISS right now. And since she has some time off this morning, she's able to join us live from outer space with Atlantis com uh, Commander Chris Ferguson. Atlantis ISS, this is KSDK TV. How do you hear me? And we have you loud and clear on the International Space Station. Sandy, let's get some personal business out of the way. Is there anybody you want to give a shout out to in Belleville?
Yeah, I just want to say hello to hello, everybody audience. in the area, my family and my friends. Uh, it's a really nice time up here. I wish you could be here. A lot of conversation about this being the final shuttle flight. I'm wondering, is it bittersweet at all? Pessimists say the U.S. is in danger of losing its leadership in space. Optimists say retiring the shuttle program opens up new opportunities. Tell our viewers why they should care about the future of the U.S. in space. Well, first of all, uh, let me address your first uh, question about retiring the space shuttle. You know, uh, space program is uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing that we have in the United States. We are committed to it. We have the resources to do it, and I think it's just fantastic. Plus, it gives tremendous opportunity for young men and women to enter uh, fields in science and math. Um, you know, we're not completely uh, giving up on the space program. Of course, we still have this International Space Station. We're going to have American astronauts on it for years and years to come. Retiring the space shuttle does give us, however, some resources so we can make the next step to leave low Earth orbit and perhaps uh, go back to the moon or maybe even to Mars. How does being in space affect the aging process for astronauts? Because you two look a lot younger than your years. Well, I don't know how it affects the aging process, but you certainly do feel good up here. Um, it's amazing, really. I think one of the things I found about space flight was coming back to Earth and feeling what gravity is like and how much it's just pulling you down to the planet and weighing you down. And, of course, up here we're in free fall. We're floating around in zero G, and it's, it's a lot of fun and uh, probably makes us look a little better, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk a little bit about the life of an astronaut on the uh, space shuttle. One day you're space walking, the next day you're hauling trash or fixing a toilet. You've got a variety of tasks on this mission. Absolutely, not the least of which is to transfer about 10,000 pounds of food and supply over to the space station. Um, let me comment just a little bit on Sandy. Of course, she was here uh, for about four and a half months as a part of Expedition 18. And uh, one of the first things I noticed, one of the, uh, the first nights that we, uh, we kind of all uh, set up our sleeping bags and went to sleep, was that the other three crew members, they were a little restless. They tossed, they turned, they had a hard time, including myself. I looked over at Sandy. She was sleeping soundly, all nestled in her sleeping bag like she had never left. She's so incredibly <laughs> comfortable up here. And uh, it's just it's great to have her here and great to have her part of this crew. Well, we are so sorry we're out of time, but Chris Ferguson and Sandy Magnus, thank you so much for joining us, and keep up the good work. We certainly shall, and uh, everyone, thank St. Louis, thanks for your support, and keep tuned into NASA. We're going to be doing great things. We'll do. Our time right now is 617, still ahead. The Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, Fox News Radio, KTVI-TV, and KSDK-TV. Atlantis crew on the ISS, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Great job.